All right, YouTube, Loudmouth Bassin here. So this video you're about to see was requested by a Facebook group I'm a member of called the Arizona Urban Bass Assassins, or for short, Azuba. Um, sent out a Facebook poll, asked them what they wanted to see. One of the lakes, urban lakes they asked for was a, a lake called Chaparral Lake here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We went there. It's an overfished lake. There's constantly people fishing for trout, catfish, bass, most of which keep what they catch. So it's tough to get bites there. It can be done. I know plenty of people that have. I've actually caught fish there before. Um, so we went and we tried to catch some bass. We were there for about two, two and a half hours from about 4 p.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, well, you'll see what happens in the video. But before we go there, my next video is going to be a pre-fishing video for a tournament I have at another lake on a boat. And I have a question for you guys. In the comments below this video, I want you to go ahead and tell me when you pre-fish do you bend the barbs on the hooks? Do you don't set the hook and just reel in slowly to see if you can catch a fish without hurting it? Do you even try to set the hook and catch a fish? I, I mean, are you just throwing hooks out there with no hook, no points on them trying to get bites? What are you doing for pre-fishing? Let me know. Let me know by Monday because I'm going to go out there Monday and video pre-fish. So we'll see how it goes. All right, without further ado, here's the video. All right, so we've come across to the south side of the Chaparral Road. We're going to fish this little pond over here. Water is a lot dirtier, some nasty muddy water, about six inches of visibility. Not as bad as Tempe Town Lake, but definitely not clean. And we'll take the bag off the easy way. So far we've caught a Senko and a plastic bag. No fish. Again, just bouncing it off the bottom here, feeling the bottom. It's like I want to, a little bit of wobble, a little bit of bounce, bounce, bounce off the rock. Usually that's what antagonizes that strike, is that bait fish hitting the bottom, bouncing off a rock. So a quick shout out to the Arizona Urban Bass Assassins Group. I put a little poll on their Facebook, asked them what lake I wanted, they wanted to see me fish. And the winner of that poll was Chaparral Lake, so here I am fishing one of Chaparral's lakes. Most of them are thinking I'm fishing the other side, but I came down to the south side because I know there's some decent two or three pound fish in here, maybe even bigger. Hoping to get one to bite this thing. So ladies and gentlemen, I do have the pleasure. That was a bass. <laughs> Fishing with James Moniz, one of the best crankbait fishermen I know of. Working on my crankbaiting this year. That was part of my goal this year, was to learn crankbaits and swimbaits a little better. James is definitely a, one of the best crankbait fishermen I know of. So, good to be out here watching his cadence, seeing his retrieve. I've seen that man catch more fish on a crankbait than I know. I'm trying. I'm having a tough time casting over there into the wind with this rod and everything. This isn't really the ideal setup for a, sh a, sh a square bill. Ladies and gentlemen, I said something red in this water. The red crawdad, the famous color. It's not a DT-10, it's too shallow for that, so I'll throw a lipless. Rip it across the bottom here. See what that produces. Something tells me it's going to produce nicely. So in these muddy conditions, I really, really enjoy these red crawdad colors, the bright red colors in the muddy in Arizona. A lot of people say go something bright like chartreuse. I like the red in the mud. 
as you can see here I'm tying a simple polymer knot put the bait through in a loop simple overhand knot take the loop tag end wrap it around the entire bait pull both lines that you have in your fingers still tight hopefully not catching any of the hooks because that's a pain pull both ends tight clip the end off all right let's see what we can do with this thing I have a feeling I'm going to get a little more reaction out of it. You can definitely throw it a lot farther with this rod. So this bait's a three quarter ounce. A little heavier than that square bill. I'm able to throw it a little further and my bait caster does not bird nest up because it's a little heavier and easier to throw. And actually loosen the cast control tension knob just a little bit and cast it even further almost all the way across the lake now i'm gonna try a little different something i'm gonna jig this thing up and down create some vibrations it's worked for me in the past this bait's got some loud knockers in it <laughs> Make some noxious sound. I've got some on the bait. There we go. That should have freed it. Jigging it also keeps it free of debris usually. See if I can catch it with my lipless. Hold on, I'll see if I can catch it. Probably is. Nothing else floating around here. It's going to be tough with a lipless, but I'll try. No, it's a lipless. All I'm trying to do is get the line to run over the bait, and then the hooks will catch the line. Did it break off at the knot, or did it break... Damn. I have it. Yep. Took me two casts. She recorded that shit right there. It did. It's been recording. Lure retrieval right there, folks. Oh, that's all messed up my that's line. That's how up. it's done. Ah, burnt my eyes somehow. Rip yep, using the rip and wrap to catch other baits. Yeah, see, and then I got special hooks on. All right. Oh, there saved you 20 bucks. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I thought you, you guys saw the fish. No, he lost I the lost lure. And he just saw it floating there. I was like, that's it. <laughs> I took you two casts. Yep. Good. Good. Precision casting but catches no. fish. All right, I'm going across the street to catch a fish now instead of a lure. <laughs> I've been fishing for an hour and 20 minutes and got no fish yet. Got to get one. Although I... All right, first one to catch a two pounder wins. <laughs> I don't know what they win yet, but they're winning something. Yeah. Gentleman's bet. Dollar. I'm going to go scare all those comrades with this cream. Did you hear me? Hey, first one to catch a two pounder wins. Let's go. <laughs> a handshake. Hey, are we allowed to go underneath the yellow tape? Because I'm about to. Okay, I'll go over it. <laughs> okay, I'll go over it. I'll even hold it down for you. Come on over. Thank you, thank you. YC, you coming over? Yep, appreciate it. 
Now that we're all in the wrestling ring, it's on. <laughs> Fish your spot all you want. All right, so we came back across the street here, north side of the Chaparral Road, fishing the south side of the lake. Done really well here. Placed third in the tournament with big fish right in this spot I'm standing in. So, oh, that was a fish. I think I just bumped the cart pretty hard. Let's run it across that point. There's a rock pile over there. Ladies and gentlemen, right here at the shore, he came up and hit this thing pretty good. About where he's at now. Good one, about two. Maybe bigger. Oh yeah, that's four. That might be three, three something. Woo wee. Right on the shore. You got your scale on you? Make sure he's bigger than two. He's been hooked before. Big old hole in his mouth right here. Loudmouth bassin, folks. 2.99. Hang on. Grab that hook, will you? You got all my stuff over there at the bench. I don't want to go get it. <sighs> Told you the color was red, man. Oh, hush. Not your fingers, come on. All right, let's see the scale here's at zero. We'll put this fish on it. 2.99. 3.33. Three pounds and a third right there, folks. Oh, sweet. He hit you right here. About six feet off the shore he hit me as I was pulling it off that point. Get a pretty picture with this pretty big boy. Let's wash him off a little bit. Get some of that dirt off of him. See you later, big girl. Woo wee! Loud mouth bass. On that red crawdad my favorite new color <laughs> and on my new Dobbins Fury swim bait rod with a lipless I caught a three pound bass that's the way to break in your new bait rod Woo -wee. I was just saying on the camera of five or six casts ago that these bass here, they, they hide against the wall, you know that. So I threw it down this way first a few times, trying to parallel the wall, and then was reeling it in right here and came up and nailed it. Six or eight feet away from shore. Three, three, three. Yep. And a few of the Canadian geese have shown up back here at the lake today. Like I was saying, I saw a video on YouTube the other day from a guy fishing with Jesus. By all means, check out his channel. I am a new believer, and I feel that it has changed my life 100% for the better. So, if you get a second, go check out his channel. If you like his videos, give him a thumbs up. Subscribe, maybe. Same thing with my videos. If you like what I'm doing, hit the like button. Even better, subscribe. There's a few of us YouTubers out here that aren't into the vlogging 
which nothing wrong with it by all means let them do what they do but we're into this teaching people how to fish thing one of them captain mikey mosier out of florida his youtube channel is sawgrass bassin i believe and again he likes to teach people how to fish which you really can't go wrong with that similar to what i like to do out here is hopefully i'm teaching you guys a little bit something in these urban lakes what's in that tree people Woo-wee. All right, now everybody on YouTube now knows my spot at Chaparral. And when I say my spot, I mean his spot at Chaparral. 